And hello everyone, Viewed Fires. Welcome to a new episode. And I am here with a special guest. Uh, a man of God that I know for a little while now. And let me tell you, I know he's a sports fan. And unfortunately, he's a Manchester United fan as well. But I would like to welcome this oh. man of God. You know, Gideon Bowen. Welcome, Gideon. How are you, sir? Yeah, well, good day, everyone. Good day, good day. Thank you for having me. And bro, we are still brothers in Christ. Amen. <laughs> yeah, we well, you know, but they oh, must bro. have the band today. As an Arsenal fan myself, you know, we must yeah, have yeah, we yeah. must have that banter. Uh, you know. Brothers in Christ. Yeah, I mean we can't really speak to load. We can't really speak to people in the road first, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you need to people at the same level. Exactly, exactly. You know it is two more successful oh, clubs. Man. Anyway, we'll get into talking about Arsenal and Manu at some point. And as I say, ladies and gents, I feel a little patriotic today when you know my Trinidad and Tobago kit. We won a game yesterday, yeah. and the reason I'm bringing that up is because today we're gonna to talk about sports, and today we're gonna to talk about is God in sports. And then you will ask that question, but Jesse, what kind of question is that? God is in everything. God is in... But we're not looking at things on the surface. We want to delve deep, not too deep, but in the short space of time, we want to get into is God in sports? Now, Gideon, we know there are a few athletes out there in a few sports, whether it is basketball, cricket, football, who are believers. And I kind of touched on this on our previous episode uh, with my brother Samuel, where we actually talked about uh, athletes in and uh, uh, Christian athletes, but we know the Steph Currys, we know the Sydney McLaughlin, the Dion Sanders, the Kaka, and and even I remember a time. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but there were some players of Portsmouth back in the day. Where Portsmouth had a good squad under Harry Redknapp in two thousand eight when they won the yeah. FA Cup and stuff. They were ballers. But yeah. they had a, you see now their success was due to because they had a group of believers of Christian footballers that were part of that core team and they helped yeah. them to succeed. So we want to touch on, Gideon, oh. we want to touch on, yeah. is God in sports? Is it a case where he's interested in the individual or is it a case where if we pray as believers that he will help our team to win? <laughs> um well I will I will answer that question. All right, that's a very broad topic and you can go hours talking about that. But I will I will just say that um, um when you look at sports, remember sports is a is a recreational activity. You know, it's an exercise. You know, and um really and truly I know people I, I am at a science, me and myself you know, I tend to get a bit emotional when it comes to taking in the football, taking in sports in general, because I'm a sports guy and I don't want to run sports. You know, and um, for me, I I believe that um, me as an individual, you know, God is concerned about me. But in terms of the actual sport, um, I would say that perhaps um, perhaps you as a person, you might pray, you might be in God for something. You may ask for, hey, God, I, I need to see this for. And let's say this for, you may say that God influenced the game, right? But at the flip side now, let's say you pray, and you pray for God to, you know, God, come through for this game. Let the next team win for, let the next team, next team I'll give up a goal, something like that. And it, he doesn't come through. He doesn't answer your prayer. You see what? Well, Go right in and serve a prayer, right in. And you know, there are people that get caught up with, you know, uh, God must come true for me when it relates to sports team. But for me, I don't, I don't look at it like that. I uh, basically, I am a person. I don't really pray. I don't really ask God. I don't really say, well, God, is, uh, I really need this team to win. Um, from experience, from experience. <laughs> Because I back Manchester, I back Manchester, and it was very hard um, to, to see my team lose after I pray so many times. But you know, I I don't believe that um, 
because um, a team loses or win is, is predicated on God answering a prayer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's so that's so true. Because what it what it could do is 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 in our mindset, so then we could get a case where we're so kind of religious about things, where every little nitty gritty thing we want to. Oh my God, I need to pray for this. Or you know, and then what it kind of yeah. goes to, it goes on the boundaries of kind of superstition. Mm. And we have to be mm. careful of that as believers in Jesus Christ that we go down the road of superstition. You, you, you know, that is, that is a very important point because, you know, I, I, I see people who have certain routines when they're in playing. So I put on this jersey because anytime I put on this jersey, my team does win. Or I do this, you know, I, 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 I don't brush my teeth. <laughs> You don't rush it because they know if they don't rush it, your team might win. And you know, things like that people will do, right? And they literally go um, and do these kinds of, um, it almost steps into the part of, you know, almost witchcraft, even because it's not really, it's not really um, God inspired. So, you understand? So, why are you doing this? Yeah. That's so true because then the next question I would want to come and ask you is, and, and you say you don't do it personally, but for those who are out there, does praying matter as a fan of a particular sports team? Does praying matter? Does praying... Because, all right, let's look at it from the perspective of God, right? Let's look at it from God's perspective and God's, and, 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 and God's view as us as his creation on this earth right and we know the word of god says that he created this world we are in the world and we're talking about believers here but we're not of the world so then does what we do and our prayer is it have to go in that way does it have to go in that way where we feel that there's so much control over the world system in our That's, that's it. And as I said before, um, I personally, I have experienced a break while I pray. And um, I think um, I, I would like to bring it from my next perspective because um, I would have played football before. I played football um, up, until, um, up until 2019, the year before um, the whole lockdown and everything. You know, but um, I, I used to play, you know, I played for my church. And um, one thing that we do before every game is that we, we will pray, right? We will pray before. And I want to look at it from that perspective because at the end of the day, um, even when we do something, right? When, even when, if, we, if we go out to, to work or, we, or even play football as, as I would, would do sometimes, you know, it's always the football first and always the ask for it for that um, covering and that guidance because we never know what could happen if we step out onto the pitch. Right? And uh, so too, if I'm supporting a team, um, I don't find it necessary. And this is the best I think. I don't find it necessary for me to uh, pray that that team win. I like football. And I prefer to just enjoy the game, watch the game, enjoy the game. And uh, whatever the outcome, I'll be happy. You know, I'm, I'm maybe a bit mad. I, I'm, I admit, I am, I am mad when, you know, we have a team we could have beaten. <laughs> we should not be the team. You know, but I, I for one, I don't think that um, it's, it's necessary. All right? It may be wrong. I know people, maybe people may have a different outlook on it, but I don't think it's necessary. Oh, sorry. And, and for me, right, is is is. Two things we, uh, I want us to touch on, but before before we, we get on to that, it's, it's a case where for me, being an Arsenal supporter, being a West Indies cricket supporter, being a oh Trinidad Tobago football supporter. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I've come through a lot. I've come through a lot. You know? You're still going through a lot. <laughs> I, I'm still going through a lot. I'm walking through that valley. I'm walking through that valley. <laughs> I see in depth, I see in the oh shadows, everything, <laughs> right? 
But but the case, you know, is 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 the sanity of it all is understanding mm. that it's just a sport. We get yeah, so yeah. we get so involved and you know, and so attached. Yeah. And then yeah. so my my two yeah. follow up questions is. Is that one understanding that if we get too involved in it then it becomes like an idol and mm. then we place it before God where mm. that time where the day come when our team come on to play and nobody could stop us from watching our team play we mm. have prayer meeting we have mm. men's meeting we have this meeting and all yeah. we care yeah. about at that point is watching our team play and how well, do we well, then bro. Gideon, Gideon, Gideon <laughs> how do we then yeah, yeah. overcome putting this and knowing where the boundary is no pun intended mm. the idol yeah, 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 the yeah. idol of the sport mm. well, well bro um, very very good question <laughs> One thing I want to bring um, to light as well, for those who watch football especially, you know that football, majority of the matches sometimes are played on Sundays. And uh, <laughs> for those who go to church, you know how hard and difficult it is. <laughs> so the way that the team is playing are only the same time service is going on. You know? <laughs> you know, and, it, and it, let me tell you something. Sometimes, Especially if it's a final or some bit you know, you, you really want to watch it, but you know that they have to go into the house of people. Now for me, now for me, God comes first. God comes. You understand? So even though a, a match may be going on, um, I make sure to put God first. If I need to be in church, I go to church. All right? And I think it's all about ourselves because we, we pray to God, yes, we pray to God to remove the idols of our heart. Yeah, but when, when a situation arises where we are asked to make a choice between, hey, I can stay home and watch football, or I can go to church. We tend to give in to the idol rather than give, give in to what God wants us to do. And for me, I, for me, I, I would prefer, right, that I go and serve God rather than serve this thing, because this thing will only supply me and benefit me for a while. But God is for eternity. Right? So, for me, um, I I think it's all about me making that effort, you know, in terms of making that decision to go one way as opposed to going the other. And let me tell you something, that decision may not may, may be easy for me now because I am accustomed making a choice and making a correct choice but for others who really like football and really can't do it on football you know i i have seen people literally stay home to watch football yeah i stay home from church right i should not say for no one <laughs> i should not say for no one that's I, that's not me eh? that's not me eh? and that's not me in our past and our past life in a younger time huh? not me at all I hear you, bro. I hear you, bro. I hear you, bro. But it's, it's, let me tell you something. It, the emotions and everything, especially if it's a person who likes to play football, who goes football, who grew up in football, it, it does be difficult. It really does, it really does do be difficult. But um, I think you must put God first. Regardless of the, the situation, regardless of the, the urge and the desire you may have to do something, to watch a football match and say, God must come to it. Right, and this is what I I I live by. Amen. I so love that. I so agree that. I hope you guys, as as you're hearing what what Gideon is saying, agree with this. I have a, a portion of scripture, First John, two fifteen to seventeen. It speaks about do not love this world. Right. Yes. Gideon yes. is now talking about that. Do not love this world, and that's that agape love. That's that love that we must have for God. So mm -hmm. God is saying in that scripture is you cannot take the love that you have for me and place it in the world and place it in the systems of the world and place it in something as trivial and listen, it doesn't have to be sports. It, ha it could be in, 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 in social media. 
it can be in, in mm. watching TV, it can be in people, right? Yeah. And and the thing about it is that, and we know as well in Exodus, uh, where you know one of the commandments was, "Do not put other gods before me." God was saying this, mm. "Do not put other mm. gods before me." And and the yeah. question we're yeah. asking, right? Is are you putting things before God? We get we get a little broad here. Are you putting other things before God? In this, yeah. because uh, by the time this recording comes out, we will still be in the pandemic, right? Yeah. Have you put stuff before God in this time where God has made such time for us to spend with Him? The question is, was it really time? Was the problem? Was time the problem in your relationship and spending time with God? Or is it that really is now what time for you to search and find that relationship with God? Because as you were saying, Gideon, God comes first. God comes first for you. And it's because your relationship with Him, that is why He comes first. That no sport, no matter how much you could love Manchester United or Trinidad or, or bleed whatever team you're supporting, basketball, cricket, whatever. It could never come before God. It could never come before God. No matter how much you would want to, to love it. Because you know, at the end of the day, what really matters. Your eternal life matters. And you have to love God in word and deed. I believe it's Colossians 2 that speaks about loving God in word and deed. Right? And we have to be, in, in the way that we live our faith, it has to be in actions. Faith is an action yeah. word. It can't just yeah. be the case of, and I'm not saying people here have done that. We're in church, we're still watching the football. <laughs> I say, and I just, Ooh. you know. Right, and we all I must see, admit, I must admit, I have pulled out my phone uh, and watch the stuff. I must admit, I've done that, I've done that. <laughs> guilty, we guilty, we guilty. <laughs> that, listen, we are all man, we are we flesh, is an enmity with the spirit. And it's happened, it's happened. Yes, yes, we're not true, perfect. yes, true, yes, true. We're not yes. perfect. Yes, sir. But then lastly, yes, lastly, right? Last, last question for you, sir. Is, is it a case, and I know I'm, we're talking specifically about the athletes here, the Christian athletes. Just like us and, and, and normal people, this is a job for them, right? This is their, this yes. is their form of work. This is the, the, the income they earn. It's just, it is a form of entertainment. So the question is, yes. For them, when they pray or when they when they uh, want to go out on the field and do well, is God there with them? Is God helping them? Um, I will answer that by saying, um, like uh, I'll remember the example I used earlier considering um, when I when I play for my for my team, um, we would pray. And we'll ensure that we pray before every because at the end of the day, um, we want ourselves to be sort of covered. We want ourselves, um, as we step on there, to be in dry frame of mind. And most times after we pray, we feel that calmness, we feel that coolness as we step out into the field. And I believe that um, any any profession, um, especially sports, um, where it is mainly secular, we see so much secular things happening in the field of sport. You know, um, people who um, having all sorts of different um, relationships, you know, all these paparazzi, you know, pushing different agendas, you know, um, of the world, you know, and it's so difficult for, um, for Christian athletes to really um, be themselves and be the source and light. In the darkness, so I, I, um, yes. I would, I would, I would hope that um, athletes would pray. I think it's important for them to pray and also to cover themselves, even as they step out the field, because they never know you can get injured. You know, uh, one of one of the Christian athletes that I know about who plays basketball, his name is Jonathan Isaac, 
um, he um, unfortunately was had a very, very uh, bad injury. And um, it was so bad that he had to sit out a, a whole season recuperating. And, um, you know, in, in, in situations like this, um, it kind of um, opens up your eye and wonder, and wonder, uh, wonder it, it, but you make the thing that perhaps if I had prayed, I know I'm not saying that he didn't pray or he prayed, right? But it's so important. Um, next thing you, you step out and let's bring it general again. Next thing you step out and you're going to work and uh, he didn't pray. And as you step out, there's something happening to you. And then you know, this, you know, the first response you will have in your mind, or one of the first responses, push up, I forgot to pray. Because they usually do it all the time. And I think praying is so important. It should become like second nature, especially for athletes. I believe that they should have that, that prayer life, even as they step out onto the field. It should not stop. Um, because of, you know, you have to train and exercise and do all these things. It, they should have the prayer life more than ever. Yes. Yeah, that is that. That's so true, and 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 you know we we understand that in in all our endeavors, in all our endeavors as believers in Jesus Christ, as children of God, we have to understand that He is there to bless us. He's there to take care of us because yeah. we are now grafted into His kingdom. We are His own, so it doesn't matter yeah. what we do or where we are. And here's the thing. It, if it is a space where it brings glory to God, he will yeah. find himself evident there. And and I just I just 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 find that just you know, hey, people saying you know, but well, what about this particular job that I'm in and, and this particular place that I'm in? We have to understand that if we have that relationship with God, He will speak to us, and we will have that discernment yeah. to know. If I should be in this yeah. job, or if I should be in this home environment, or if I should be in this yeah. workspace, and he will open the door for a different avenue. If it's not the case, where if it's it, it's destroying your soul, so we have to yeah. have that relationship with God. No, and even in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, where it speaks about He will bless our hands, but He will bless our Very hands true. as we are faithful to Him. Very true. Yeah. That is paramount. He will bless our yeah. hands as we are faithful to him. Now, Gideon, it let me tell you, it was such a, a pleasure to have you on here and talking about this yeah, topic. Bro. And and my thing about it is that we can't just have you on once, you know. We have to come back again. We have to talk more yeah, about yeah, this yeah. because because I feel yeah. we need to go into the area of 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 these Christian athletes having an impact on the world, being examples for God in the world. So when we think about the LeBron James yeah. and the Naomi Osaka yeah. and the Serena Williams and them, yeah. and the amount of impact they have in, what about the Christians? <laughs> what about the believers, those athletes out there? All right? So guys, wow. next time, tune in. We're going to have more. Thank you so much to Gideon for, for being on today. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Youth Fires. Now, by the time we come out, we don't know who would win the Euros. We don't know if it's coming home or if Spain will take it. If Spain will take it. We don't know if Spain will take it. You know, we have so many things coming up. We have the Olympics coming up. We have a lot of yeah, cricket. Yeah, There's yeah. The, the basketball. NBA Finals is, is very soon as well. Yeah. So, guys, yeah. please, please, please stay safe. And, you know, wait for the next one. All right. God bless. Take care. Bye-bye. That's it.